Hello and welcome to One Family at a Time. I am Dr. Sheila Halpin, coordinator of the Family Involvement Team. It's that time of the year again. School is beginning. From pre-kindergarten to high school, dropping your baby off for a new school year can feel heartbreaking or exhilarating. This program will help to define how to make the transition easier so that you and your child can have the best school year possible. I am being joined today from some of the staff at Orange Ridge Bullock Elementary School. Cindy Wanacott, school counselor, Olivia Smith, reading specialist, and Juana Delgado, parent liaison. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I was going through a store yesterday, and it was interesting to me. All the school supplies were out, and I saw children and parents, and some of the parents were saying, if I buy double school supplies, will they take you back early? And I thought some, <laughs> some, some of the kids were saying, no, school's torture. So we're getting ready for a new school year. So what are some ways that we can help our kids and our parents have a smooth transition? Cindy? Well, I think probably the, the biggest thing is to have the parents be as excited about going to school as we would like our kids to be. And I think beginning to talk to them a week or so ahead of time about expectations, I would imagine schedules and things have gone a little bit haywire through the summer, but get them back into, you know, good sleeping habits, good eating habits. Um, review kind of their responsibilities and your responsibilities as a parent so that they're ready on the first day of school to go, okay, I've got it. I have no reason to be nervous. Excellent. So Olivia, how do we start to meet our teachers and get information from our school as to what's going to happen this year? I think that's a really good question because um, the relationship between the parents and the teachers is almost as important as the relationship between the child and the teacher. Um, so it's. In, I think uh, schools should we want school to feel like a place where parents are welcome, uh, where they feel comfortable calling about their children with their concerns or questions, uh, where teachers feel comfortable calling parents, um, hopefully not with concerns in the beginning or at all, but with um, some updates about their children. Excellent. So some forms of communication that, that the parents can use? Uh, I think there are a number of and I, I, I teach in an elementary school, so I can only really adequately speak to that. But um, in elementary school, and probably in the other schools as well, notes back and forth, written notes, email. Often teachers, um, I think possibly in the higher grades too, give their email address. Uh, that's a great way if a parent has a, a computer at home. Um, in the lower grades, they have agendas, mm -hmm. and teachers write in the agendas. It's important for parents to look at the agendas every day and that, use that as an opportunity to write back to the teacher. And then they can also make an appointment, telephone the school? Absolutely. The phone is always available. Um, all, teachers are, if they're not available at the moment, they, you could leave a message and, and the teacher will call it back. Excellent. Now, Juana, how do parents show that they're excited for the school year to start? They... Well, they'll ask the children questions about if they're ready, going back to school, getting them prepared. And if the parents show that excitement of asking questions, are you excited to meet your new teacher, your new friends, that kind of motivates the children to want to go back to school. And I also think, you know, last year's over with. So it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what happened last year. This is the start of a new year. We want to start planting those seeds. This is going to be a good year. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you're yeah. going to have more responsibility this year. You're going to be learning new things, new classrooms, new friends, new experiences. Yes. And I think it even comes with going to buy school supplies, mm -hmm. whether you can afford a few or an, a lot of school supplies. I mean, you don't need to be to overdo it with school supplies, but seeing seeing families in Walmart and Staples buying school supplies, you can see the excitement mm -hmm. that's starting mm -hmm. to generate yes. with both the parents who are probably a little excited about having their kids go back to mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. and the kids who are getting ready. Now, Cindy, what do we do about the first day jitters? It's an interesting thing to watch those first day jitters. Um, occasionally, it's actually the parents who have more of the jitters yes. than do the children. Um, and it's not confined only to our younger students. Uh, any child who comes into a situation new really will be a very nervous student. And I think it's very important to have um, the parent, if at all possible, come in at least to the front office with the child. 
Um, it's very difficult for a child when they are dropped off the first day of school, come in, you're standing there in front of a group of strangers. So the parents' role in that first day um, helps tremendously for them, even to walk them to the cafeteria for breakfast, whatever. Um, but then there comes a time, in my opinion, where the parent has to bid farewell to the child, um, to sit there with them sometimes for 30 or 45 minutes waiting creates more of an issue for the child. So my suggestion to the parent is certainly come in, go to the cafeteria, have you know one of the students escort you to the classroom, introduce you to the teacher, and then kiss your little person goodbye or shake their hand or whatever and be off on your own schedule. Um, knowing and, and reassuring the student that yes I'll be you know I'll be home after work today or I'll pick you up or whatever the case is I think the reassurance for students to know how they're getting home out of the mouths of parents mm -hmm. takes some of that that jitteriness away from the kids there's enough on that first day without worrying about oh, I forgot how I'm getting home how mm -hmm. am I getting home that kind of thing well because the child feeds off of your feelings absolutely Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a little story I'll share. The, the first day of school for my son, he was starting preschool in one of our schools, and I actually followed the bus. Now, he had no idea that I did that, mm -hmm. but that was because of my jitters. Mm -hmm. But I watched him get off the bus, and, and we had already toured the school before that. But I always remember that. It was my anxiety, but yeah. I didn't want him to feel that. So he got off the bus. He was happy. He was greeted by the teacher. He knew what to expect because we had gone to the school mm -hmm. before that for a back-to-school night. So he was well prepared. But I always go back to my, in my mind that that was my anxiety not his. That's right. So it, I think you're right to have a stopping point. Take your child to school, but be mentally prepared that you are going to have to leave them. Mm -hmm. Now, some of our schools will even do a boohoo breakfast for parents where, you know, <laughs> once the children go into the classroom that the parents can all meet, and that's great for a social networking mm -hmm. type of building a, a rapport with each other. So um, I think we have lots of great tips for our parents and support for our parents, but you're right. We, we want to have a stopping point, have our mm -hmm. parents prepared that you are going to have to say goodbye. And we really yes. will take care of them. Yes. Well, and I think yes. every child is different, too. Some children, like your, you were talking about your son, happily got off the bus. Mm -hmm. He was prepared. Mm -hmm. Some children are, are really prepared that way and able to do that themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and some really need a little bit more support with having a parent walk them and guide mm -hmm. them to their, their mm -hmm. first steps of their journey. We're all ready for that. Like you said, there's mm -hmm. support at the school for that. But, you know, for our parents, I think you're right. Sometimes there's more jitters on the parent side than on the child's mm -hmm. side. Now, Olivia, for the curriculum or information about homework, how do I find that out or how do parents find out? What are the expectations for this school year? That's a good question. I think a certain amount of that will be answered at the open house. Um, but in the meantime, uh, again, they can write a note to the teacher. Um, the younger, the, with the younger children, it won't be, it's going to be some breaking in period before they start getting homework and, and before they'll learn the expectations. It, school truly is a place uh, for the whole family, but a responsibility for the child. Mm -hmm. um, and so the teachers will, will, that's their job, is to make sure the kids know what their responsibilities are and if there is a question to make sure that the parents know as mm -hmm. well. And I think that's a good point, that, that homework is a child's responsibility. Every year I have parents ask me, you know, what is our homework policy in the district? And we actually have one, mm -hmm. and it's 10 minutes per grade level. So homework will be assigned to children, but it's the child's responsibility. And then if the child can't do that homework, then the parent can support the child through the process and say, I'll contact your teacher through the yeah. agenda book that, or make a phone call that you didn't understand it, or you can talk to your, your child's teacher and I'll write a little note. Mm -hmm. But that, that homework is for the child to be doing at home. Well, and it's really important, I think, as a teacher, that if a child is spending longer than the allotted time on a regular basis, that the parent let the teacher know that. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's something the teacher needs to know. That's an important part of, of their learning. I agree. Now, Juana, breakfast is so important for nutrition. To start off the day well, it's going to help our children stay healthy and help them learn better. What are some tips for nutrition for parents, or how do we find out information about school breakfast? Well, the parents, they can uh, go on the school webpage, and they do have menus on there. So the parents can see what is being served for that whole month. 
uh, also for parents uh, that have smaller children, they can also print out the menu and help pick out with the student what they're going to eat for that day or for that whole week. For nutritious, parents just need to start buying nutritious food mm -hmm. and keep mm -hmm. around so the kids can snack on. And the teacher should tell us that. You know, I know in our younger grades, we're sometimes encouraged to send in snacks because it may be a long time yes. between mm -hmm. breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. sometimes in our older grades, teachers don't want snacks to be sent in. So that's on a school-by-school uh, -school basis and a grade-by-grade -grade basis mm -hmm. as to what nutritious snacks we may be sending in. But we really don't want those sugary no. snacks. We want something healthy for our kids. So, Cindy, what are some other tips for parents when we're starting school um, to set expectations for our child for that school year? Well, I think sometimes it's it's a difficult, um, and again, I'm going from personal experience here with um, our families at Orange Ridge, many of them have uh, parents who are working. Um, and our students' day may begin as early as 5 a.m. And they come in to us after being home for maybe an hour while they've gotten out of bed, and then they've been at a daycare center for two hours. So when we get them, you could almost look at that as being a half a day of work. So we need to, I think, set aside some time um, as parents to, to help the children understand that when they are at school, they are there to learn. And um, that we as parents have a lot of interest in what they are learning. And in order for us to show the children that we do indeed feel that way, it's very important, in my opinion, for us to stay with them for a while when we get them home at night. Um, when they put that agenda under your nose and say, Mom or Dad or Grandma or whoever, sign this. My teacher says sign this. I think it's important for the parent to look in that backpack, to know that that homework's been done, that they've put forth effort to do it. If they don't understand it, to make a note in that agenda, letting the teachers know that those parents have struggled and the t student has struggled. Many times the parent won't help with homework because they're afraid they're going to teach the child the wrong way to do it. So we have that issue. But just, just be sure, I think, that you look at everything the child brings home. And you emphasize the good things that come out of that backpack. You know, you got 15 out of 30 right. I'm so proud of you for doing that well. Next time we might get 18 or 20 mm -hmm. instead of going to the negative to go to, because I believe if we set positive and we reinforce positive and we set expectations that they can achieve, that the children will be very eager to go to school and learn and come home and share with those parents. I know as a counselor, I see it a lot. They'll come in to me with papers, or let me read this book to you, or look what I did today. Little tiny things, you know, it's not toys, it's not going to McDonald's, it's, it's the five or 10 minutes that you might be able to spend in the evening with your child just going through all those those mm -hmm. things that are important enough to bring home. Well, in, su in supporting the educational process, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's also important for families to have a routine. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what happens in our family? How do we get ready for school? Do I have to go to a preschool first or a daycare first or grandma's house first or do I get on the bus first? But what's the routine? Do I have breakfast before I go to school or do I have breakfast at school? And talking the child through all mm -hmm. that. And then what happens after school? You know, we have after school programs. Am I staying in an after-school program or am I going home? And then when is homework fit into the day? And it shouldn't be that homework fits in last. It should be that homework is a part of the process mm -hmm. and part of our family values that that homework is going to help you do better in schools mm -hmm. and we're going to be supporting that. I think the struggle that, that comes with us is the fact that many families do not have a routine. Mm -hmm. And it's not their fault no. that they don't have it. They just they just can't get the family into a routine, be it the work schedules or the, you know, some of them work morning shift this week, afternoon shift. This. I mean, those are real world mm -hmm. issues. And again, for me, the five minutes of quality time, I don't care where it is, but if you spend it and you look at the things that are important to the child, I believe that the children will indeed 
take school far more seriously than they would if you just sign the agenda, put it in the backpack. I think Cindy makes a very, very important point because it really is, I mean, if you have a lot of time, that's wonderful, but time, the message to that child is you value my education mm -hmm. and I need to value my education. I think that's such an important point. Mm -hmm. And what about getting to school on time? Can, does that make a big difference? Because sometimes I'll see kids coming five, ten minutes late, and you think, well, it's only five or ten minutes. Mm -hmm. I think Juana can address that pretty much. You're in the office when those kids in come in. Office. And they're missing, they're missing those five minutes that they're coming in late, five, ten minutes. They're missing out of class. And if you add all of that up, at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the year, Cindy and I did the math, mm -hmm. they're missing like two days of class. Mm -hmm. if you add up all those five, mm -hmm. ten minutes that they're late. Yeah, I think if it's an occasional thing, that's one thing, but we have, there are schools, you know, and I don't think our school is unusual, that you have kids that are missing five or ten minutes, sometimes every day, sometimes mm -hmm. three days a week. But you're right, it makes yes. a huge difference at the end of the school year, because school is starting when that bell rings, mm -hmm. yeah. and kids are in their classrooms and they're starting to be engaged, and if you're coming in ten minutes after the fact, as you said, you could miss two days by the end of the Absolutely. school year. And I think it throws the, the children off. Um, I know as an adult, if my day starts late, my whole day is just a little bit crazy. And then when these kids come in, they've missed the opening of school, they've missed the checking of the agenda, they've missed the turning in of homework, and then breakfast in most cases. And then the day has started and they're kind of lost before they ever come in. I think if there's anything that the parents need to work on very, very hard is the fact that they get those kids to school on time and that they let them stay the entire day. You know, the other end of the morning coming in late is the parent who comes at 2 or 2.30 to pick the child up before dismissal at 3.15. School instruction is still going on in those classrooms from 2.30 to 3 o'clock or 3.05 or whatever. And I think parents need to understand that whatever's going on in that day is important and the kids really need to be there for that full day. And yet at the same time, and I agree, I couldn't agree with you more Cindy, at the same time we have children that miss a whole day because somebody's overslept mm -hmm. and they could have gotten the child there at 10 o'clock but instead the child misses the entire day. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important, I mean I, I'm a great believer in getting to school on time getting that breakfast being being part of the entire day mm -hmm. but if somebody if the person who drives you to school wakes up late go to school right mm -hmm. go to right. school it part of the day isn't better than, than none of the, none day. Of the day that's right yes. that's right Olivia for expectations for our grade levels you know each child is coming into school starting preschool or starting kindergarten this year but our children that are returning are going on to another grade so what are some tips for parents to prepare our children for those additional responsibilities for this year? Well, it's interesting because I think a lot of times, um, often parents feel they have to be the teacher for their child. And that's not what we, what we require for parents. We, it's important that parents support their children. It's really important that they, as Cindy said, spend that quality, those quality moments. And I think if at all possible, it's really important as a, as a reading teacher that they see the importance of reading, that they read to their children. I mean, you could read to your child all the way through high school if that mm -hmm. was, if they'd la allow you to. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly in the elementary level, reading to your children if possible, having your child read to you, reading side by side, having your child see you read. Um, I think those that sets the the standard that we value what goes on in school in the tone because it should mm -hmm. be fun to go to school yeah. and you want to come home and and share your successes exactly. with your mom and dad mm -hmm. and your family so I, I think that's a great point that just reading at home with your child is a great way to set the tone it's a very it can be a very uh, you know close moment mm -hmm. and it's hard to carve out that time but it doesn't need to be a long time mm -hmm. if you were able to do it for five or ten minutes and saw how great it was, you might be willing to extend it. And five or ten minutes is more than, than, than you might have done before. Right. 
Now, Juana, I see out in our stores and I've seen on some of our websites different supply lists for our students. And some of our schools will actually have uniforms, and your school's actually one yes. of them. Mm -hmm. So what do parents do, or how do they get that information as to what they're going to need for this school year? They come into the front office. They can ask for a, a paper showing them what, you know, what the uniform is. Most parents, they call or they come in and they want to know, they want to see an example. We had a poster board in our front office showing parents. During open house, we would put that poster board and let them know what the uniform requirements were. Now, one of the things I hear from parents is there's sometimes a lot of things on that supply list. So if I'm having some financial problems or some difficulties, I know that there's some churches that provide backpacks and different school supplies. I know there's some community organizations. Project Heart helps a lot of our families that yes. we have in our district. So if I can't get everything on the supply list, is that still okay? That's, that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine because most teachers do have supplies there. And I tell parents because they'll come in and they'll say, I don't have the money. I said, what's important here is that you get your child to school. If you don't have to buy school supplies, there's organizations that will help and we will have that for your students. And that's the same for the uniforms also? Mm -hmm. yes. So if, if I can't get all the shirts I need or all the shorts I need that I might be able to get help from the office? From the office and I have numbers of people. There's a thrift store that just opened up and they emailed us and let us know. And then I, just today I just sent parents over there mm -hmm. for uniforms. So that's wonderful. So we have help out there for our families. Yes. It is expensive. It is expensive. Mm -hmm. But we have help. And we the first absolutely. Thing absolutely. We can do a start at the school and then find out yes. what we need. And sometimes we even have it at home. I know with my own son, I recycle his folders every year. Mm -hmm. You know, they're sent home and I just save them over the summer and pull them back out again because they're still, you, you, you can still use them. So that's another way that we can try to recycle mm -hmm. things. And with the uniforms at the school, I know parents can turn uniforms in mm -hmm. if their children outgrow them. So we have supplies at our mm -hmm. schools also. Right. I think the parents also need to realize that it's, it's not an embarrassment to come in to us and ask for help. Mm -hmm. um, we all need it from time to time. And for them, it's better, in my opinion, for them to come in and say, you know what? I can't do this. I can't make it with the shirts and the shorts or whatever. Rather than have that child come in out of uniform mm -hmm. and be, be different from the rest. So I would encourage the parents to feel comfortable to come in. You know, many of our parents are Spanish speaking. We're fortunate to have Juana there. And we try to make them feel comfortable in coming in. Don't be embarrassed to come in and ask for help because if we can, we will help them, as opposed to having the child stand out as being different. Right. And I always tell parents that if I can't help you, I can find someone mm -hmm. that can help. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. So, Cindy, the first day is coming. We're going to have all these babies coming to us. So how do we deal with that first day? There's going to be a lot of people trying to find out where to go and so when we show up and there's all these cars and all the buses and all these little ones everywhere, where do we just even start on that first day? Um, well, again, I'm imagining that that varies from school to school, but uh, we have a pretty good system at Orange Ridge. We have a lot of, of folks who are adjunct staff, if you will, and everybody is in that front office on that first day or in the cafeteria because that's where our kindergartners are who truly do need most of the help yes. and um, we do have uh, ambassadors that are the fourth and fifth graders who have been with us from kindergarten most of them and some are bilingual so we make sure that they're available so they can take the people around you know we give them a little bit of coaching they introduce themselves and then they take the parent and the child introduce them to the teacher that sort of thing uh, anything that we can do to make it less um, chaotic, mm -hmm. we try to do. And it's worked amazingly well for us. I just think the more adult supervision you have available on that day and car riders and buses and daycares and all of that, um, the better it is. And, and I have to say we've had very few tears, except from the parents. Um, 
in the past few years. The kids have been really very good about it because my older kids will take the little ones. They'll, be, they'll supervise the kindergarten lines and help those kindergarten teachers take those kids and make sure everybody stays in line, nobody gets lost. So the more adult supervision we have, I think, and the calmer the adult stays, mm -hmm. the better we all are. And the conversation you want to have before school, just as you said before, this is how we're getting to school, mm -hmm. this is how we're getting home from school, so that the child knows what mm -hmm. to expect, even at the end of the day. Because I think the end of the day on the first couple days of school can also be chaotic if it's not I think that's prepared. too when the, the children get uh, nervous. Yeah, too. I think they're exhausted. Yeah. Mm -hmm because they haven't done this now for a couple of months. And they have a long school day. As I said, some of them start at 5 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the end of the day sometimes is a little more interesting than the beginning. Well, we are going to be closing. And does anyone have any further remarks that they'd want to share with us about back to school and any tips? Uh, why don't I start? I, as a, a reading teacher and, and a lover of reading, I would encourage families to read, to have your child read, to read to your child, to have your child read to you, to read newspapers, to read, it doesn't matter if it's a book, it doesn't have to be a book, a magazine, a newspaper, a flyer, a menu, uh, read, 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 it's, it's such an important part of their education. And I would just say to the parents, be involved in your child's education. Always stay in touch with the teacher and anyone there in the front office or in the school. And there's many ways to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of following up with Juana, I would say, you know, take advantage of the workshops that are available to parents, particularly if you're going around the first time. Um, and those of you who have had elementary students and you're going around the first time with middle school, that's a whole new ball game. Please become involved with your kids and your workshops and just understand that there are other people who are doing the same thing that you are. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've collected tips from veteran staff to help you and your child have a smooth transition and successful school year. So forget last year's late night homework and missed bus rides. This is the start of a new school year. You and your family can reevaluate and establish routines to set guidelines to help you and your child have the most successful school year possible. Thanks for watching. See you next time.